Alright passengers, this is your captain speaking. As we prepare to land over here in Bricksville, I would like to thank you all for uh, riding Totally Safe Airlines. Uh, if you notice down to your right, you will see the gigantic flak array that we have purchased in order to reduce the amount of aerial problems. Now luckily the flak array shouldn't cause us any issues uh, because we are going to have the appropriate aerial codes in order to get on by it safely. So if we can just, what was that? Son of a bitch! All right passengers, uh, unfortunately the attendant who was in control of the coats is hungover on Vodka Zero. So I'm gonna try and bring it in the old fashioned way and we'll see if we can get past the flak array on our own. Luckily I've been highly trained in various aerial maneuvers such as the left turn and the right turn. All right passengers, it appears as if though the flak cannon has completely sheared off the left wing. Uh, but don't worry, that's why planes come with two wings. We still have a right one. I'm sure we'll be completely fine and won't have any issues to speak of. All right, passengers, at this point now, the flat cannon has sheared away most of the fuselage as well. Uh, that is it is. We are on a crash course for the middle of Bricksville. I'd like to thank you all for flying with Totally Safe Airlines. And remember, Jackie Up Insurance Company is always there for your insurance claims 24 hours a day. If you're still alive to make them after we impact the ground at 350 miles per hour. Have a good day! Well, after the recent destruction over here in Bricksville, it was decided that the city needed some sort of defense mechanism. And thus, this old beater was taken out of retirement and put to the test. We test a lot of ground vehicles. We don't really get the opportunity to test a lot of aerial vehicles. This thing has like a hundred and, I don't know, 140 flat cannons that fire in incredible intervals. I don't think that there's anything that can survive it. We've seen a lot of tanks and a lot of ground stuff, but today we're gonna test to see whether or not there exists a being that can take the punishment and still manage to land over at the airfield. Yeah. Go ahead and place your bets on how long this is gonna last. I don't think this thing was really made to take punishment. On a totally unrelated note, this thing flies like a dream. Okay, so, um. You know, our, our R2 unit probably has his work cut out for him as we begin to take a couple of shots here and there. Not too bad though, I'm gonna tell you, The maneuverability of the X-Wing is proving to be pretty valuable. Uh, <laughs> the parts are flying everywhere, but we're still in one piece for the most part. If it, if it stays as is, we'll be able to... Alright, now we may not be able to land. I think it shot all the engines out on that last go. Hold on, we're still gliding. This is fine. We're still gliding. We've lost all engines, but we're starting to float through all of the shots. There goes one of the wings. Instead of an X-Wing, it's now just kind of like an I-Wing. It's it's just one chunk of wing at this point. All right, do a little bit of a turn here, and then... I... My body fell through the planet. Um... I don't know, you want to call that a... You want to call it a success? Yeah, it's probably not a success. I'm gonna give it a secondary attempt. If you want, you can always go into uh, a lovely cinematic view like this and kind of determine exactly when the impact is gonna start. And it seems to be right about here. It just depends on how many we can mi- Oh, we did it. We made it through a whole pass through the flat cannon and we're in one piece. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, 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 okay. The second pass wasn't so good. Oh, I'm gonna glide it in. We're gonna glide it in. This is awesome. We're doing it. We're doing it right. I mean, we're on fire, so we're burning alive. But I'm gonna be able to land this thing. Watch this. I'm gonna set it down nice and easy. If I just kind of tap it, just tap it. And look at this. Look, at it's like a swan, a gentle swan gliding on the lake. And there it is, as if flying a kite. Wow. We did it. Again, you know, we're burning, but we landed the plane. I don't know if we should consider the ability for the pilot to survive as one of the categorical portions of a successful landing. Yeah, we probably will. Rip Lego Poe, 2018.
F's in chat. All right, how about a big beefy cargo plane? As we prepare to do some evasive maneuvers, I kind of wonder if I if I could get away with having like one and a half seconds of the Top Gun theme song. <laughs> flying this thing is a lot like flying a gigantic croissant with a turbo engine attached to it. Needless to say, it's kind of unwieldy, but I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, into the flat cannon. No time for this crap. Can we take the beating? Here we go. All right, we're starting to get shots in here kind of close. Um, okay, the shots are starting to impact the hull. It's not looking too good. The front of the plane is beginning to disintegrate. It's like the bigger they are, the harder they take these hits. Probably because there's so much space for the flak to destroy. There's our Brickman. Look at him flying with no hesitation, no fear at all. The entirety of the plane being peeled away by the flak. Still doing, there goes one of the rockets flying off into the distance. Okay, let's see if we can land it. Here we go. Okay, we're losing more and more of the plane. I still have it. It's still kind of in one piece. Never mind, it's not in one piece at all. It didn't work. Attempt number two. There's the very first vestiges of impact. The plane trying to power its way through it by allowing the main body to take most of the hits. Okay, we still have some engines. Oh, I'm no longer in the cockpit. I don't think I'm I don't think I'm in the cockpit anymore because I can't even I can't even press anything at this point. Did my brick guy get removed from the cockpit or did the cockpit get removed from the main portion of the plane? What's going on over here? Where's my guy at? Am I still in there? Oh, never mind. We have a rogue brickman spotted. Uh, heading straight into the commercial district. It looks like it's going to be a belly flop style of landing. Let's go ahead and give that a five out of 10. That is a five out of 10 landing. All right, this one here is specifically armored. It also carries a ton of firepower, but can it deal with Bricksville's flak array? All right, so this is going for the idea of being incredibly small and maneuverable. The question is, can we make it through the flat cannons with minimal damage? Let's give it a shot over here. I don't even think we've taken one hit. I don't even think it's touched us. We did. We just sped through. Okay, part of the part of the the tail maybe got shot off. But other than that, we made it completely through the flat cannon. If you were gonna bomb Bricksville, this is probably what you should use. Let's do it slower. All right. Now we've cut the. Uh, oh my God. I was gonna say we've cut the the speed a little bit here. Uh, and it's already starting to show a couple of the hits beginning to mount. We haven't taken too much damage though. Flat, nothing a little flex tape can't fix. Let's see it. Let's see if we can continue to exist in the current uh, state of aerial defense situation going on here. Again, a couple more hits, but the armor proving to be incredibly durable to the point where we are still flying. And we are still flying to the point where unless something drastic happens, I don't think that we're gonna get stopped. This thing's incredible. I'm flying into the flat cannon at this point and it's still in one piece. What is this thing made out of? Let me see if I can land it. If we can land this, this is gonna be the winner so far. That is two passes, two full passes. Dial back the, the thrust and then bring it on down nice and slow. There it is. And with a lovely uh, mountain in the way over here, we should come to a somewhat soft, if not whiplash inducing stop. And there's your winner so far. The flat cannon is not sated. Let's see what happens when we throw 6,000 bricks worth of plane at it. All right, so far so good. I think that the main thing to worry about here is whether or not the engines explode, which will cause like a chain reaction in the rest of the plane. You can see we've already lost a little bit of the wing, but it's not that bad. All right, we're gonna do what this plane does best. We're gonna glide on in. Doesn't take much thrust. Nice and slowly, like the tortoise in the storybook. We can win the race unless we get shot by a bajillion flat cannons, which is bound to happen anyway, because that's the entire point. Now in a second here, we will come to a, oh God. Oh, I think it has begun. All 6,000 bricks are currently feeling the pain. Hold on, let me see if I can reposition so we can check out exactly what's happening here. Yep, I can hear it. The massacre has begun. Wings are flying off. Fuselage is spitting, splitting apart. Whoever may have been inside 
igniting in flames. Thousands of bricks whirling through the air as yet again the flat cannon shows that the smaller the vehicle, the more protected you are. Oh my god, the flat cannons are still hitting what's left of the body. Look at it shred it. It's just like going through a wood chipper right over here. All of the bricks slowly being fed to this beast, this hungry behemoth, until pretty much nothing's gonna be left. I mean, this thing's just gonna fall to the ground. There is, I mean, I can, nope. I don't even have control over the plane. That was all that was left in the controllable portion. Just the cockpit. And in the background, the tail lands in someone's backyard, probably while they're having a barbecue. I guess they can cook it now on the flaming passenger entrails. I, I don't really know what to say about this. Um, I've got to put it through the flat cannons. There's, there's no way I can not put this. It's a helicopter made of bobs. This is all the people that showed up late to work because they were drunk on Vodka Zero. This is what happens. This is penance. I can't believe this thing flies. Like... <laughs> it flies really well, too. What does this world come to? Whatever. Let's go over to the flat cannon. This is probably one of the strangest things I've ever flown in my life. It feels kind of bad driving this thing through the flat cannon. But honestly... Everything else had to do it, so we'll see how well this does. Now, we made it through the, the initial flat cannoning pretty good. It's more a matter of, like, can we lower ourselves into the cannon and survive because it's a helicopter. So let me just go ahead and position it right over here by the flat cannons. We need to give this the same, the same test that everyone else had, and here we go. Starting to bring it down in altitude. Starting to bring it down in altitude. Starting to bring it down in altitude. Okay, things are starting to get a little dicey. The flat cannon is starting to shear bobs off. Bobs are going flying. Bobs are going flying left and right. We still may be able to save this, though. How many bobs does it take to keep this thing flying in the air? Oh, right about uh, two bobs worth. Look at that. They did it. You could accomplish anything when you work together. Okay, I'm testing now to see if we can take off into the flat cannon. All right, ready? Let's see how it does. We're going to uh, keep a close eye here as the cannon portions are about to impact our voluntold bobs. They didn't really have a choice. This wasn't really a voluntary position. This is something that every bob that failed in his mission had to be a part of. So right now, in just a moment, the flat cannon shots will be passing by the helicopter and oh my god, like all of the mist, the bobcopter makes it. Hallelujah. It did so well, I have to fly this thing directly into the flat cannons in celebratory bliss. There we go. It's still mostly in one piece. It's still flying somewhat. It was always meant to happen. It's the flying Brictanic. Let's see if this thing can power its way through the flat cannons. The Brictanic isn't really one of those things that flies very fast. It's one of those things where it's a wonder that it flies at all. Okay. We're starting to get pretty close to the flat cannons at this point. They're going to begin shaving off the top part of the Britannic. Can it take the beating? Here we go. Now remember, this thing, this thing's a beefy boat, all right? If you were going to have something to protect your crew with, this looks like the appropriate choice to deal with something like 140 or 150 or whatever flat cannons. It is taking shots all along the side over here. But the damage so far appears to be fairly minimal. See, for the Britannic, the hard part is landing. Because the landings can be, like, less than soft. And it can also destroy my entire processor. Oh, it wasn't that bad. All right, I'm going to give it one more try. But this time, we're going to actively attempt to attack the Britannic. Come on! Absorb that firepower! Wow. Uh, the Britannic is freakishly tough. It's taking direct hits. And not even pieces are flying off. I think we found one of the most potent flying machines in Brick's rigs. So, if the Brick were to be weaponized, this would be the item for us to fear. 
And as we sail off into the beautiful blue sky, that's going to be it for this episode of Brick Rigs. Until next time, folks, stay foxy and much love. <laughs>